Android P Developer Preview 2 is here, providing a significantly updated snapshot of what the next release of Android is ultimately going to bring to developers. Slices allow you to surface rich, templated UI from your app in places like Google Search and Assistant. They can be interactive as well, with support for actions, toggles, sliders, and more. Slices are part of Jetpack, which means they are backwards compatible and fully updatable, including new template types. App actions are closely related to slices. Slices essentially provide a UI for embedded app functionality, while actions are a new way for your app to provide a list of intents to expose functionality within Google Assistant, with possibilities such as watching a video, reading a book, hailing a ride, and more. Android is adding notification animations to allow for seamless transitions from notification to app. You don't have to do anything to take advantage of this feature, but it will be so much better if you make your app start quickly, particularly when cold starting. Typing a reply from within a notification is great, but not having to type at all is even better. Smart replies allow you to present quick choices that can be acted upon right in the notification. Text measurement is expensive, which is why the new pre-computed text API can offload a large chunk of this work to a worker thread. Pre-computed text does require more memory per glyph, but in many cases, this trade-off will be well worth it. Android is also adding a new magnifier widget designed for improved text selection and cursor manipulation. By default, classes that extend text view automatically support the magnifier, but you can use the magnifier API to attach it to any custom view, which opens it up to a variety of uses. There are new APIs to make your app more accessible. Accessibility pane titles allow accessibility services to determine when specific sections of the screen have updated, which is particularly helpful for supporting fragment transitions. You can specify a title for a pane, such as the content area of a fragment, with the Android colon accessibility pane title attribute, or change it at runtime with set accessibility pane title. Similarly, you can now identify text views as being headers, which allows TalkBack to navigate between them. Previously, the attribute for focusable could be used either to optimize your app for keyboard accessibility or for talkback accessibility. We've now added is screen reader focusable, so you can make sure that your app navigates optimally for both keyboards and screen readers. In display cutouts, we've made a few minor API changes since the first preview. Namely, layout in display cutout mode always has become short edges to reflect that P only supports cutouts on the short edges. Since the API supports cutouts on both edges simultaneously now, you get a list of all cutout bounding recs instead of a single bounds. We now have a theme attribute to tell Android to lay out your activity in the cutout area. This attribute will also be available on some Android O devices that have cutouts, so it's a backwards compatible way to declare that your app can utilize the cutout area. Also, the developer options now support emulation of more cutout types, such as corner and top-bottom dual cutout. Android is continuing to invest to improve battery life and system health. App Standby Buckets puts running apps into groups with different restrictions based upon usage patterns. Apps will change buckets over time, and apps not in the active bucket will have additional restrictions around jobs, alarms, network, and high-priority Firebase cloud messages. As a developer, you can test how your app operates under each of four defined buckets using ADB commands. Check out the documentation on App Standby Buckets for details. From our work on Android Vitals, Android can detect battery draining app behaviors. Within Battery Settings, Android will flag the list of these apps and let the user apply restrictions to the app's background activities. You can manually apply background restrictions via ADB to test how your app behaves and performs. You can use Activity Manager Is Background Restricted to determine at runtime if background restrictions have been applied. Biometric Prompt was added to Developer Preview 2, replacing the fingerprint dialog from DP1. In addition to supporting fingerprints, including in display sensors, it supports face and iris authentication, providing a system-wide consistent experience. There is a single use biometrics permission that covers all device supported biometrics. Fingerprint Manager and the corresponding used fingerprint permission are deprecated, so please switch to Biometric Prompt as soon as possible. We've added Strongbox as a new key store backend, providing API support for devices that provide key storage and tamper resistant hardware with isolated CPU, RAM, and flash. You can set whether your key should be protected by a Strongbox security chip in your keygen parameter spec. 
Autofill has added an API that allows it to work well inside of RecyclerView. GetNext Autofill ID is used to manage views whose content is recycled. It returns an ID that is unique in the activity, which you can associate with every item in your adapter as they are initially viewed. You can then call set autofill ID on each view as it is reused. In the first preview, we displayed a toast warning when an app used a non-SDK interface that we plan to restrict. But in the second preview, we're enforcing these restrictions, which means it will get exceptions thrown or nulls returned instead of a warning. If the non-SDK interface is required for your app to function and there aren't SDK alternatives, please file an issue with us immediately. Also, strict mode now supports a warning when it detects reflective usage of APIs that aren't part of the public Android SDK, even if they still work in the preview, so you can plan for the future and eliminate non-SDK API use. The preview includes Vulkan 1.1, a substantial update to the industry standard cross-platform graphics and compute API, and here are some highlights. Multiview is great for VR, allowing efficient generation of left and right eye views. External memory and YCBCR formats enable processing of video and camera images, while a collection of additional shader capabilities improve compatibility with shaders written in HLSL and OpenCLC. Thanks to the support of device manufacturers and the work we did in Oreo with Project Treble to enable faster system upgrades, you can test the preview on more devices than ever before, including devices from manufacturers such as Xiaomi, Sony, Essential, Vivo, Oppo, Nokia, and others. Also, Developer Preview 2 is available through Android Beta on Pixel and Pixel 2 series devices, so consumers can try it out as well. As always, your feedback is critical, so please let us know what you think. The sooner we hear from you, the more of your feedback we can integrate. Look in the video description for details on how to report issues, and enjoy Developer Preview 2.